Oh yeah. Look, there's definitely evidence that of pissed off pixies, right? It's never gonna chooch again. Oh, I know, low hanging fruit. But like it or not, that guy's become kind of a uh, staple in pop culture around these parts, so you can expect more references like that. They have lots of appeal. So I stuck my N64 in, and it poof, exploded, and I guess one of the these came loose, and, well, not that one, but I think the, the hot one came loose, and it allowed it to close the circuit, and while it was quite violent, it blew the, it tripped the circuit, the circuit breaker and everything. Um, I guess I'm lucky that I didn't lose something. So, I don't think that guy watches these videos anymore. I think I lost him last time I culled the herd with my satire videos. But, uh, I still pop and I, I like to watch those videos. Even though he's too cowardly to show himself. We should be able to get it razor close to the th thickness of our material with the knife, but if we cannot, we can adjust it with a piece of sandpaper on a stick. Oh, maybe you're asking, but I don't have a piece of sandpaper on a stick, and I don't have a saw, so I can't make one. Well, I call this the work paradox. See, I used to have a buddy who, he couldn't get a job because he didn't have a car. And he certainly couldn't afford a car because he didn't have a job. So he was trapped in this vicious cycle. You see, at some point, you're going to have to pitch in here. I can only help you so much. Camera one. Camera two. Camera one. Camera two. There's a reason that we have binocular vision. Having two images in stereo gives us two perspectives at the same time that kind of blend together and help our brains to build a three-dimensional image. So it's really a useful way to approach a better conceptual understanding of something. And that's exactly what I was trying to do with all that math gibberish that I was using for this video. I know it might have seemed like it was just ridiculous because I was only comparing two very similar rectangles. One being this one that's made from a bunch of overlapping circles where they overlap at the center of the circle and the other being a um, golden rectangle. So as per usual, I expected, you know, the just normal barrage of commenters saying that I made things overly complicated and that I don't know what I'm doing and that I'm trying to sound smart and all of those cliches. But there is something that I'm doing. I'm trying to explain that mathematics is a tool that you can think of as a metaphor for binocular vision. I use it to not always directly solve problems, but it can be useful for a way to look around an object in another way. Mathematics is another way that we can use... It's a mental tool that we can use, and when we apply it to something, we can use it to further our understanding of that the thing that we're studying. So often, oftentimes I do mathematics relating to something and it's kind of a silly little dance I do around it, but it, it's just so that I can, like anything else, look it over and attempt to build an understanding about that thing. Okay, if that sounds completely stupid or unnecessary or ridiculous or pretentious or whatever, fine. But that's what I do. <laughs> Okay, back to explaining this thing. Now, if you don't have a table saw, we've arrived at the hard part, and I'll show you how to do it the easy way in a moment. But first, let's approach this as though we can use a knife. Now, we have to make a slot, and the slot is the thickness of the material. And the slot goes all the way to here, which is the length minus the width divided by two. All of the parts are the same, and so they all get this slot, which starts on one end, and goes all the way to here, and it is exactly the same thickness as the material we're using. 
we determine where it stops, that is the length of the overall piece minus the width divided by 2. Or just print out a template. Man, this is really hard to explain for some reason. I quit last night because once you film something like five times in a row and you can't get it to roll off the tongue correctly, then it's time to either make a script or hang it up for the day. And it just wasn't coming out right. Sometimes very simple things are very difficult to explain on camera. It takes a lot of practice. And another thing is you may write, you may write something out for a script and then when you attempt to read it, you just find that it's really cumbersome or you just trip over everything that you say. So script writing is very difficult to do. It also requires some degree of understanding of public speaking because there are transitionals and um, I don't know, all sorts of other ways that you want to make a logical progression through your uh, um, idea as you chase your MacGuffin. <laughs> there are lots of things that I would like to go on the record saying whenever I'm filming one of these and it's hard to do it in a video that's under 10 minutes and especially if you're incorporating mathematics into it it's real easy to get it to drag on and you'll s I, I can just tell when it's becoming boring math is hard to spruce up so that so that it's palatable for most people not everyone finds it um, as interesting as I find it and I can understand why it's very dry and logical and procedural and that I can easily see why it, that wouldn't have an appeal but because of that, I, I'm struggling for concision here with the main channel videos that I make, and, and I try to make them precise, and um, brevity is the soul of wit. Have you ever heard that? It's true, uh, and people do like when you get to the point. I know you're here for secondary content, so you don't mind if I uh, rattle on for a bit, but on main channel videos, I wouldn't do that. So because of that, I have to leave out a lot of things and I regret that because some of my some of the explanations that I would like to get in there like why I would think that it would be useful to use mathematics as a under, as a conceptual understanding tool or why I would bother going through the motions for something that is the equivalent of 3 30 seconds of an inch uh, discrepancy it would be nice to explain all that but not everyone one really cares because they just want to make a cool looking object and I get that so while some of us uh, are showing kids how to use molten lead and play-doh to make knuckle dusters others of us are actually trying to be somewhat um, socially responsible by I'm trying to infuse some sort of useful content and smart content into all of this because it's real easy to just watch prank videos and cats falling off of refrigerators and etc. So if I can get you to engage that prefrontal cortex for a moment amidst an otherwise dreary day, good! That's a good thing. And this stuff isn't as complicated as it seems, okay? I'm not trying to act smart. This is laughably simple. In fact, most of these are just stating the obvious of what we know and defining our terms for clear communication. It's just clear expression. Some of, them, some of it is useless. This turned out to not even be necessary. It's just me stating facts at the beginning. These are just facts about this figure. And then I applied very simple math. This is just the Pythagorean theorem. That's all. There's nothing in here that's beyond you, even remotely. And then when we get into here, most of these are redundancies just so that I can apply it to the unit that I really want it to be. So that I can get an even number that's comparable. This in a golden rectangle compared to this in this hexagonal, hexagonal infused rectangle. So it's not hard. It's just me talking out loud. I'm rambling mathematically. It's just... I wish people didn't I, I wish they weren't so intimidated by it. It's just a bunch of symbols, and once you learn the language, most of it's just 
see dick, see dick run, run dick run. This is Jane, Jane goes up the hill to fetch a bucket of water. It's really, really easy stuff, man. Don't be intimidated, learn the rules of algebra, and then learn how to do the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, what are those where you do two comparison problems? Um, ratio problems. Those are very useful for carpenters. And then, of course, the square, square root of 2 is useful for carpenters. Uh, 1.144, or wait, uh, uh, never mind. You figure it out. Good morning. I'm going to finish the shooting on this project today. So we've time traveled forward in a day. And yes, I know I wear the same shirt, you know, to kind of for continuity. But actually, I didn't film it all in the same day. I'm going to try to finish this now. But I haven't finished my coffee, so I'm not awake enough to invent good dialogue. But I have to say, after reading some comments, man, are some of you petty. I mean, really. Okay, so if I say, I picked up a cheesecake, that implies that there's a pan, that the cheesecake rests in a pan. But invariably, you get some commenter who says, oh, you shouldn't pick up a cheesecake. People have to eat that. And it's like, what? If, if I say I picked up a cheesecake, it just implies that the cheesecake is in some type of vessel. I'm not going to pick up a cheesecake with my bare hands. Maybe I'm mixing metaphors though. Do you remember how I talked about the cherry pie demographic? No, that was, I think that was on one of those hidden videos. That might, you might not have seen that. Okay, so here's the Cliff's Notes version. The cherry pie dem, hold on. The cherry pie demographic is this small advocacy group, I guess you could say. Because when you make an innocuous statement like, uh, I like pie, I like apple pie, then there's always going to be this person that comes to the defense like a white knight. He'll ride into the defense of cherry pie and telling you all about why you're wrong. <laughs> it, the comments, man, wow. It's hard. Like, I... I want to be honest, but every time you're even remotely genuine, you just get smacked for doing it. It's like it's like gopher bopping. Remember that? Whack-a-mole? You stick your head up with just a little bit of originality and wham! <laughs> every time. So, speaking of advocacy groups and, you know, like very, very particular domains where people really fight hard in their defense. Music. I'll talk about it. So, you can probably hear I'm listening to Tool. And how I do it is, they're just these little... You put the entire... everything. Their entire discography on one of these things. And this has zero function except to play that. It doesn't, it doesn't even have a radio. And I do have a battery pack for it, but I don't really have use for it here. So here, I'll discuss music. Here's what I'm listening to usually. And yes, this will piss some people off. But what can I say? We all have different tastes in music. That's how it goes. You can't decide what you like. See, when you're young and you're struggling for to solidify your identity, you kind of resist what you naturally really do like. <clears throat> now I have no pride, so I don't care. I'll admit to you what I like. I like the Killers. I especially like their newest one. That would be... Oh, I can't remember. I can't remember what it's called. But I do like it. The Smiths, um, he's a... Morris, he's a bit whiny, and his solo stuff is especially kind of whiny. But man, the Smiths, the original, their entire discography, awesome. I love that. I listen to it quite a bit. Coldplay, again, sad and whiny, but I love it. And yeah, it's poppy, but 
it's also good music. There's a reason it's popular. REM, I, wow, yeah, I definitely like REM. The whole way through, every album is original and for its own reason something that I like. What's this? Oh yeah, Pussifier. Okay, this is so, this is weird. I kind of like it, but it's weird. And it's solo project from the guy that, the lead singer from Tool. Travis? Oh yeah. Awesome, mellow 90s music. Highly recommend. Radiohead? Uh, do I really need to sing its praises? Um, you should be familiar with Radiohead. It's it's great. It, there's a, it takes a long time to get into it, though. At first, you'll, you'll just think it's noise and garbage, but then slowly it creeps in and you start to realize how it's brilliant. I don't know what this is. Oh, Fleetwood Mac. Yeah, don't just listen to rumors. The other albums are pretty good, too. Um, what's this? Focus? Mixtape. Lots and lots of mixes. And this is Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, Hans Zimmer did not make all the Pirates of the Caribbean. The original one was done by... Oh, I can't remember his name. Well, anyhow, this is getting too long, so I'm going to cut. But I have to say, Pirates of the Caribbean, all four of them, awesome. Once you start to listen to that, it, it, it really gets in your head.